the hookup on music featuring your main man, Tony the Sugar Baggy. Welcome, everybody, to the week of June 10th. Today is June 12th, a Wednesday. We are glad to be joining you on episode 73. Oh, my stand by me, episode 73. I can't believe it. It's got like a real ring to it, episode 73. I'm um, in shock, um, just like uh, today. Uh, we're not going to go through it in a comprehensive way, just a real quick. Uh, today, the uh, announcement was made for Riot Fest. And the reason why I said we're not going to go in depth is we're going to have an in-depth special on all the bands that are, are involved Everyone from Beck and Spoon to Slayer and Lamb of God and oh my geez, they are it is loaded. Newfound Glory, some 41, just just a lot of bands. But what I am gonna bring up today is that the festival has moved. Yes, it is called Riot Land. Riot Land. And I seem to have been muted here. Um, it is now taking place in the uh one and only um what's the word i'm looking for here uh my audio got thrown off here but it is uh taken place in uh where i think it's bridgeview bridgeview illinois is exactly where it's taken place so yes i try to set that up as like i didn't know but uh i did it is going to be taking place in bridgeview illinois which is going to be a change, a little bit of a change, because, well, the last couple of years it has taken place in, well, sadly, Douglas Park. And um, Douglas Park seems to I have been uh, muted again. It is interesting to uh, hear all of the people who are just talking about this. You can't or can't can't escape the uh, excitement that has been going around for this. Again, you know, when you start mentioning some of the bands, uh, a reunited Sublime, who we've talked about before on here, um, the Offspring, Public Enemy, um, just some really, really awesome bands that are are going to be really, really awesome. But this change of venue. You know, is, is this something that uh, people are excited about or not? You know, it's it's a real tough sell. So what I did was is I kind of looked through some of the comments on the comment board. And, you know, you, you're going to always get a whole different kinds of what I'm going to explain here. Uh, positives, negatives. You're going to get, oh, um, people who don't always complain about the band lineup. When you're always going to find at Riot Fest, I always seem to believe that uh always quite 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 a lot of um you know um i'm laughing here because i'm thinking about one of the responses it says uh you'll be out of a job when this fest tanks in a year or two and have to go back to slinging drinks at all rise um already people wishing for its demise um with bands like public enemy pavement um cypress hill uh, Rival Sons, Clutch, who we've seen a couple times, um, Poison the Well, awesome name. But again, wishing things to uh, be be not what you deem to be great before they happen is, isn't really a good look. Um, someone says awful venue choice. Someone says, you know, um, complaining about the local uh, government making it uh, impossible, including the mayor, of why this has happened. Um just very interesting. And then you get a lot of welcome to the neighborhood. We're really excited. Um, you know, some people are excited to be able to drive to it. But again, look out for our uh, all comprehensive uh, episode because we're probably going to go into it just a little bit more than um, what we did today. Uh, the reason is, is because, um, you know, it's just loaded with great bands. So many that we didn't even cover here to uh, today. And um, to 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 what's the word i'm looking for to uh well you know 
let's 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 let's, 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 let's save some of that magic for when we we talk about it on the show. But uh, I'm very excited for this concert. I'm very excited. Right in the middle, you got No Effects playing for three days. Um, a really cool little stage setup they're going to have there. It seems to be Pennywise, Exploited, a lot of good punk bands. If you are interested in saying a fond farewell to No Effects, because it will be the end of them. And um, we've talked about before on the show the Marley Brothers are getting together and playing some of Bob's hits. Um, I'm definitely going to try to make it down for a day. But again, look out for that episode when we go into all the bands more in depth. Um, this, uh, yes, yeah, last night, 1984 movies were talked about on the It's Getting Drafty in Here pod. Um, I decided to let's talk about some 1984 albums that came out. Um, who who has on their um, bingo card awesome 1984 albums? Because there is a whole lot of awesome albums from 1984. Just like last night, we talked about uh, some of the, um, I wasn't there, but the uh, network talked about amazing movies. Um, Ride the Lightning by Metallica, July 27th, 1984. Of course, a classic. You cannot... Uh, Go Wrong with a Kickoff of that Acoustic Guitars, right in a Fight Fire with Fire, Power Slave by Iron Maiden. A, a, a great, 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 great album. Um, Doubles Nickels on the Dime by Minutemen. Another great album that, that doesn't really get talked about a lot. Um, except we have here talked about it quite a bit. Let It Be the by The Replacements came out in September of 84. And you're saying, what's on that album that's really good? There's a great, great cover of uh, Kiss's Black Diamond on that album, along with so many other great songs that we've talked about here on this show. Um, Smith's got an album, self-titled, came out that, al- that year. A lot of people are in um, favor of that. Um Sade, the Diamond Life album, which we've talked about oh so much on this 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 great great. Show. depth the soundtrack I, I keep being muted for some other reason tonight always something going on here at the show rock and roll critters getting into those microphones but again um again uh just talked about on the vhs the at the show's vhs and a little more in depth on um the purple rain soundtrack but you can't deny it you know computer blue i actually played earlier today just because of this 1984 uh, movie countdown last night um a lot of good stuff, though. A lot of good albums coming out from this time period, which people are are are, are digging into and, and enjoying. Okay, 1984 has a lot going for it, um, from the movies to uh, the amazing soundtracks. Um, again, it's at number 16 on this list, but uh, I would deem Stop Making Sense just a little bit higher. You could talk about that all day long. Um, a lot of other great... Great Don Henley had a great album that came out uh, this 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 given year of '84. Um, I always like the title of um, that album. It's called "Building the Perfect Beast." Um, Private Dancer by Tina Turner. A uh, big fan of that. Um, as is "1984" by Van Halen. I'll wait. Getting that keyboard going on there. Um, just a really great year all around in, in, in entertainment. Um, you say to yourself, okay, like how can it get any better? You know, 84, such a great year, but it does. You you go through a lot of these years and and say, you know, wow, Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack, which we talked about recently. Um, a favorite, a favorite of the show is, um, Ice Cream Castle, which is just a, just a, just a classic by the time who was involved in the great soundtrack of, um, 
Purple Rain, but uh, July 2nd, that one came out. Uh, Steve Perry, he's got a solo album coming out that year. Judas Priest, um, just an all around, um, again, stated great year, but uh, it was also a really, really good year for a lot of other bands in the 80s, including 1984 for R.E.M. You're saying to yourself, REM in 1984, they were put, yes, 1984, it was a pretty good year for REM because they came out with Reckoning, um, a, just a really, really good album, um, one that kind of doesn't get talked about as much because of some of the other greatness of theirs, but uh, what's on Reckoning that you may recognize just by listening to the band so much, uh, So Social Rain, um, Seven, uh, Seven Chinese Brothers, really good song, uh, Don't Look, Don't Go Back to Rockville. A great uh, lead vocal um, by Mike Mills. Definitely enjoy that one. Um, always enjoy R.E.M. They always put on what I would deem just to be a, a really, really, really great performance in the 80s. And they were uh, just happening in the 80s. That's pretty persuasion, um, which uh, also came out on the Reckoning album which was, again, um, just a great track that has been um, just, just, just in my head, it sticks uh, in, in as, a, as a really good rocker. The themes are, here. some of the lyrics are, it's what I want, hurry and buy, all has been tried, follow reason and buy. Um, just the guitars, um, he's got pretty persuasion, she's got pretty persuasion. And then, goddamn your confusion! Just some really, really powerful lyrics for a band that uh, it's the mid '80s, and nobody knows that where they're going. But uh, to be clicking on all cylinders, um, the album itself, though, uh, it was uh, well, it uh, 38 minutes and 55 seconds long, recorded in North Carolina. Um, definitely um, was certified gold, okay, in the United States. But uh, the thing about it is, is the album was dealing with some darker subject matter uh, material. Um, there was very a lot of water related imagery being uh, re reoccurring on the album. But uh, the band, again, Michael Stipe on lead vocals, um, Peter Buck on guitar, um, the ever, ever, ever amazing, as I just stated, Mike Mills on uh, bass and uh, Bill Berry on drums and uh, backing vocals. And as stated, Mike Mills sings a little bit of lead on a track and does some backing vocals. But R.E.M. in the mid eighties was, uh, or, or this was actually the, or more in the early eighties, but then they start going from here and they move on to uh, fables of the reconstruction. Another great album um, of the R.E.M. in the eighties, which uh, this one was recorded in London. So I, I always like bands that are switching up uh, recording locales. Because I definitely uh, feel that uh, it gives new vibes to everything that is going on in the album. And uh, you can hear it in Fables of the Reconstruction. There is some really awesome stuff on there. Um, Driver 8, one of my personal favorites. Feeling Gravity Pulls, another really, really great one. Good Advices. Um, Green Grow the Rushes. Um, can't Get There From Here. That is one, again, you're looking for R.E.M. to put the pedal to the metal and a little bit more uh, rocking. Um, with a band that's, well, maybe not, you might not think that they could rock as hard. Um, I liked the vibe of that song quite a lot. Um, R.E.M. was going through some really awesome vibes at, at this time in this part of their career, I think. Um, and I think it's what fueled a lot of their success in the 90s, because if they weren't going through this this awesomeness, and, and, and the next album, Life's Rich Pageant, you know, where do you go from London, you say? Where does a band go from London? And this is kind of the whole reason I wanted to talk about this piece is you go from London, where do you go? You go to Belmont, Indiana. Yeah, that's where this album was recorded. Um, really kind of crazy, too. The album title is a synonym from a, a, a movie called A Shot in the Dark from 1964. If you are not familiar with that movie, it is uh, Pink Panther, a real classic. A lot of good laughs in that if you are a fan of some of the more spoop comedy that we all love, like Airplane and Naked Gun. But again, a band really willing to, to stretch the boundaries if you're willing to go all the way to Indiana from all these other places and record at John Mellencamp's uh, Belmont Mall Studios. Yes, John Mellencamp. You knew he had to be involved if this was in Indiana. Um, 
this was the only album though um that uh they recorded there and it moved them into a more obscure and dense sound of their earlier albums to an accessible more hard rock influence quality um is what was described very interesting to hear it described that way again great songs on the album fall on me superman begin the begin um so many just a touch swan zon's h just really really great um again, piece of work by the band that I think stands out a little bit different, um, you know, before you start really clicking on some of their other albums, like when you get the document, okay, um, which is a little bit more later 80s, um, you know, just late 80s were just really, 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 really good for the band. Um, early 80s were really, really good for the band. Middle 80s were really, really, really good for the band. Um, just the 80s in general. Um, you know, document really huge for the band as stated. The one I love, it's the end of the world. Um, as we know it, finest work song. They start to get into a little bit more. Um, I don't want to say popular, because yes, they are getting more popular, but their music is starting to reach a little bit more wider audiences. Next album, Green, which came out in 88, had Orange Crush, Stan, Pop Song 89, which are all really, really, really great songs. Um, I remember California, Tune You Inside Out, World Leader Pretend, all really great songs too. So uh, please uh, check out some mid 80s um, REM if you do um, able to get a chance. Um, digging very early into another band that uh, I've listened to, but I can't say that I listened to as much as I've been listening to them recently um, with as much as this early 90s or grunge scene talk as we talk about uh, Screaming Trees um, with vocalist Mark Lanigan, um, guitarist Gary Lee Corner, um, bassist Van Corner, and uh, Mark Pickerel, um, later with Barrett Martin of the um, Mad Season joining the band, but just really, really awesome um, band with just some really, really awesome rock and songs. Now, as we dig into them, we will check back in with the Screaming Trees. But uh, I decided that we're going to just get started and, and and start by their debut, which came out in the 80s. Uh, Clairvoyance, um, uh, 1986 was their debut album, which, again, um, coming from guitarist Kim Thale, he said, uh, I like Clairvoyance for the song Clairvoyance, but my favorite song on there, Probably I See Stars, followed by Orange Airplane. After this album, they kind of fattened up their sound. So again, um, sound isn't as fat on this album, but you got Kim Thale, who seems to be uh, really, really into, um, you know, the Screaming Trees, which is one of the many reasons that have brought me to the Screaming Trees. Uh, 87s, even um, if and especially when, okay? Uh, producer Steve Fisk, who's been working with the Screaming Trees up until this point, um, is just really bringing in, um, you know, I don't want to say they're grunge, but man, there are some, um, some, some heavier tracks as you start getting into their uh, catalog. Um, Invisible Lad, Ladder, Lantern, almost a Lantern from uh, 88. Um, Sweet Oblivion, though. Okay, you start to get a little bit into the 90s, and the band seems to be taking up a little bit more. Okay, I Nearly Lost You is the song that really kind of is the one that I've seen a lot um, on 120 Minutes, and also on Cameron Crowe's um, soundtrack of the movie Singles, which we've talked about a lot. A lot of good stuff on there. But the band just keeps getting, you know, a little bit more credit, a little bit more known their next album dust okay um again the band is is unfortunately behind the scenes they there's they got some, some 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 things going on but that does not take away from the fact that these guys put out a lot a lot of awesome albums and as we dig like as i stated more into this you're going to find out that uh this this band really has the goods and and i'm i'm shocked that we haven't talked about them quite as much you know as we should just as this next artist, so uh, their debut, Three Feet and High, Three Feet High and Rising, um, the one and only De La Soul. So don't even fuss, cause DJ Paul, he's down with us. Now people stop taking my style and for a joke, I don't sass a friend. 
De La Soul could talk about forever. Uh, tonight, we're just going to focus on uh, Three Feet High and Rising. Okay, It was a debut studio album from the band produced by Prince Paul on the Tommy Boy uh, album, um, which when I think of that uh, album label, when I think about the Tommy Boy album label, I immediately think of um, a little bit of House of Pain. If you are not familiar with the House of Pain, they are, again, another artist that we've uh, brought up, another rap group. Um, the album, though, the title comes from a Johnny Cash song, Five Feet High and Rising. Um, lots of, lots of good tracks on this album. Um, eight singles, Plug Tune and Potholes in My Lawn, Buddy, Me, Myself, and I, Say and Go, which is what you just heard. I Know, The Magic uh, Number, Tread Water, lots and lots of, lots and Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Um, come from a time which we've talked about uh, Tribe Called Quest before. But again, you're getting an, a, a band where lyrics are um, feel more surreal than maybe uh, some of the other stuff. Um, some people even uh, seem to label the group a, a hippie type of group. Um, again, um, with the boom in uh, gangster rap, um, De La Soul seemed to go another way. Um, they seemed to bring a little bit more of uh, something a little bit more fun with a little bit more funk and a little bit more soul. Um, just a really, like, as I stated, great album. 67 minutes for a debut. I, I like that a lot. Um, 24 songs on this album. Um, definitely, uh, Jennifer Taught Me, Can You Keep a Secret, Take It Off, Tread Water, um, De La Or, or Orgy, <laughs> 1 minute and 14 seconds. Again, Great, great stuff from a band that I think um, I like to call everybody a band, especially when it's more than one person. So uh, just a just a, a, a an artist and, and a group that uh, Thug Upon Music needs to talk about more. And as we continue this show on, as we keep going on, I'm sure I'm going to get many guests on here. We're going to go a little bit deeper on, on De La Soul and, 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 and the magic, the magic that they they. Um, you know, they possess because again, um, you, you talk about artists that, that, that make impact. Um, De La Soul is, is definitely one of, of the, those artists, um, that seems to really, really, um, make that, that's that impact. You know, you, we talk about it so many times. Um, um, we talk about, you know, a lot, um, just a lot of different things, okay? Um, Turgoy, Massio, and Pasternos. I don't think I've messed that up. If I did, you can um, write in and, and yell, but that is De La Soul. And um, what they stand for is really, really awesome music that I think definitely here um, we need to uh, definitely honor a little bit more than um, we happen to honor. Um, just like another artist who... Um, we haven't really talked about it at all on the show, and that is Daft Punk. You're saying to yourself, Daft Punk on this show? Yep, we got Daft Punk here. We're going to talk about a little bit, a, a duo that you're saying, how many albums Daft Punk came out? Because uh, the one on the screen, or if you're listening, four albums from 1997 um, was their debut album, Homework, which is we're going to get into in a minute. But they were on from 93 to 2021, only four albums Lots and lots and lots of different type of mystery in this band. Um, you know, after this debut, they started to wear um, space outfits. And um, by they um, is Thomas uh, Bangalter and Guy Manuel de Hamon Cristo. Um, it's a duo, again. And Homework is where I got my introduction um, to them. The singles, Defunk, Around the World, Burning, Revolution 909, I remember coming out, and I remember buddies actually um, making their cars be able to play a bass at a little bit louder of a level, which is really, really, really um, something that I think is just super, super cool to uh, to um, back in the day when you some of Jay Z's earlier music again, De La Soul. Um, anything that has some some heavy bass, you would put those those subwoofers in the trunk and just get it all kind of going. And honestly, really, really, really cool. And um, but that being said, um, Daft Punk's debut album um had a lot of that, a lot of quality in it. It's a 75, 73 minute album. Um, 
definitely um if you are into French house music, techno, disco, Chicago house, anything that makes you kind of get up and move those shoulders. Um, this debut album from the band is definitely going to um, make you feel that. It's it's honestly, it's a 16 tracks, but it's almost like uh, there are tracks on here seven minutes long. And it, it, honestly, I, I, I give it a real concept album type of feel, especially for, um, you know, artists who are, maybe at this time not really getting that uh the respect maybe they deserve when the reality is is uh um thomas bangalter at the time says the band's control uh creative control he says we've got much more control than money we've got we can't get everything we live in a society where money is what people want so they can't get control we choose control is freedom people Definitely going to get a lot of stuff. Hopefully, I wasn't muted for too long right there, but uh, definitely, definitely going to uh, get some really awesome, awesome, awesome stuff when you, uh, you know, you're looking into uh, checking out that album. If you're also looking to check out another awesome album, check out Soulfly. Okay, their debut. We check been checking back in this late '90s metal boom. Um, you can go back and check out our. Um, the little episode that we did, which was very, very cool to do for um, album cuts. We're looking into late 90s um, rock, and we talked a little bit about uh, Soulfly, and and there was a just, just really, really, really cool album here. Eye for an Eye, Get Started. If you're looking for something that's heavy, um, definitely is something that I would dig into if I were you. Um, what I liked and the reason why this brought it up into my head was is just the way this album was able to bring together a lot of artists with um, the band. Like on track one, um, a couple members from Fear Factory joined. Track three, um, for those out there excited for uh, Limp Bizkit getting back, they joined the band, um, which you're not really expecting on Bleed. But yes, really, really good. Another track about the song of the loss of lead singer Max Cavalera, really worth it. Max Cavalera was the lead singer of Sepultura, if you are um, not familiar. Um, but again, Deftone singer on uh, track six, Chino Marino. Um, lots and lots of awesome, awesome stuff in this. Um, I would say I would dig deep into this. Um, lots of cool uh, tribal type drum sounds and different instruments. Uh, a good kickstart to a really, really, really great um, album. And I definitely think it's, it's one that you should also uh, dig into because honestly, lately digging into a lot of these older albums that used to be some of my, my favorites um, have been really, really beneficial at, at, at looking back because some of this stuff I kind of dismissed. And uh, it's another thing I want to always say, don't ever dismiss any of your music ever. Um, that you used to listen to because the truth of the matter is, is, is that it, everything that you listen to, it, it really matters. Um, it matters where, where it comes from. It matters how you listen to it because it all shapes us. Um, you know, but that's, that's, that, that's, that's, that's what I want to just say. Um, a lot of people do a lot of dismissing, which don't do that with your music. Don't do any um, dismissing, keep listening and, and keep growing. Unless maybe it's something that's really, really, really embarrassing. I don't know. Maybe if I listen to, like, the Spice Girls, that could be pretty embarrassing. Um, before we roll out here, uh, recently, a lot of uh, television songs go spinning in my head. Um, lots and lots and lots of famous uh, TV themes, which I'm sure one day we'll have a whole episode on them. But uh, one of them recently I, I uh, enjoy is uh, Oingo Boingo lead singer Danny Elfman. Um, he was part of uh, Tales from the Crypt. Um, this past Monday, I wrote an article about the first three episodes. Really, really awesome stuff. But uh, the soundtrack, man, that was popular. Tales from the Crypt. 
always love that beginning and love Danny Elfman's uh, intro there and love just 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 any music that comes from a television show that is as memorable. Uh, Full House. Um, I mean, come on now. I mean, I've watched Full House episode in 25 years, but this song um, sticks. Sticks in your head, the Full House theme song. How could you not get these lyrics uh, not in your head? Um, you know, it, it's 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 hard. It's hard not to get television show lyrics not stuck in your head. Um, you know, but that's 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 where we find ourselves today is getting television st- um, theme stuck in your head. Um, everywhere you look, there's a smile. Somebody who needs you. Um, the milkman, the paper boy, the evening TV. Uh, you miss your old familiar friends. Man, Full House had it all. Um, him, but you know what? Um, just always makes me laugh is the MASH theme song. Um, Suicide is Painless by uh, Johnny Manziel. Um, look through early morning fog. I see visions of things to be. Boy, what a song that was and what a title never a lot of people didn't know that that was the name of that title but well you know here we go and here it is you know tonight we answered lots and lots of questions you know we answered the question of uh, the moving of riot fest we talked lots and lots of awesome screaming trees rem 1984 albums please go back and check out uh that uh draft episode last night about the 1984 movies you're gonna have a lot of laughs those guys had a blast um check out those articles please the tales from the crypt one's really really awesome there was a really great rage against the machine article my main man yumper dropped last uh week on thursday check that out you will not 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 miss uh want to miss that and uh this friday we're going to be talking another movie with great music and that's a uh, predator even though it's a lot of jungle type of uh, sounds and such. I really love it and the orchestra and everything else. So please, please, please tune in. And uh, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We really, really appreciate that. I love saying tonight like it's always tonight, even though right now it could be your day when you're listening to this. But until that time rolls around, until we see each other again, my name is Tony. or you can call me the sugar bag, or you can call me whatever you'd like. Tone, I like, because it has a little bit of a musical ring. But until the next time, everybody, um, this was the Hookup on Music's episode 73, and we will be seeing you again soon. Take care. <laughs>